Today, we're gonna teach you how we turn this into this, a foosball table that you'd be proud to have in your own home. And we're gonna cover a few of the obstacles that we encountered along the way. All right, first things first, we're siliconing our wooden base into a mold so that we can pour epoxy over top and that will act as our playing field once it pops out of the mold. We are using Bieberdust Forest Green and we're mixing it up with Flowcast SPR. We decided to go fairly opaque with this since it is a thin layer and we didn't want to see the wood through the epoxy. So we just mixed in some extra pigment, making sure that it's not see-through. Now that our pour is cured up, we pop it out of the mold and bring it over to the CNC. So we're gonna use the CNC to cut our Jeff Mac Designs logo into the center of the table. And then we're also using the CNC to cut all of the playing field lines that will be filled with white. So we just got this piece off the CNC. You can see that we've cut the logo, the center line, we've got the uh, goal area and the penalty area. Uh, now we're gonna fill all these voids in a contrasting color to the green field using the West Systems 105 and the 207 uh, Special Clear Hardener. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the, uh, the goal area and the penalty area in the center line and circle in Star White from Beaverdust. And then for the logo, we're gonna do the tree, the J, the M, and the D in the black pearl. And then the two hatchets, we're gonna do in a shiny gold. So once this is all filled, we'll sand it down flush again, and then we'll be ready to start assembling the frame of the table. We've got all the lines and the logo uh, cured, so this epoxy is ready to be sanded. So next step is sand this all smooth, and then we're gonna start building the frame out of some dimensional black limba. One thing to note when sanding engravings or small fills like this is you want to sand evenly so you don't end up focusing in just the areas that you did the fills in. You don't wanna end up with voids and craters from focusing in certain areas too long. We wanted to make sure our playing field had a bit of sheen to it. We didn't want it to look too matte that you would traditionally get from say an oil finish like Rubio Monocoat. So we've got the buffer out and we're just giving this a nice little buff to bring out a little sheen. Okay, so now that we've got our tabletop all sanded and polished up, we're ready to start building the border of the game table. And we just ran a test piece uh, to run a dado so that we can dado all four of these pieces to fit around the outside. So we're just gonna test fit that dado before we rip these black limba pieces. The dado is going to bring some serious structure to the entire table. If you just simply, you know, butt jointed the sides onto the ends and the sides of the foosball table, it just wouldn't be as strong. Once this is done, you should be able to drop it off a roof and it won't even break. Okay, next up, we're adding our sort of goal line pieces of wood here. So we made this little plywood template so that we could cut out the exact profile of the goal into this piece of black limba. So we'll cut one for one end, another one for the other end. And then once we've got that attached, the plan is to build out the ball retrieve, which is a little more challenging than it seems because you, know, you don't want the ball to go in there and roll to an area that you can't reach. Plus we need to design it so that the legs mount up inside the ball retrieve so we can attach it from multiple points so it's nice and sturdy when you're playing. Yeah.
Now that we've got our goal nets attached to the frame, we've got these, these end brackets kind of held in place with the clamps just so we can mock up the ball retrieve. So we're just gonna use this little quarter inch Baltic birch ply and it's gonna go in on a bit of an angle right there. And the idea is that we still have room for the table leg to sit underneath there. When the ball lands in, it will ride to not the end of the piece, but it'll ride to, you know, maybe a third of the way over from the end so that we can have the other leg mounted up in there. And then we will cut a hole in the end so that we can get the ball retrieve. Now, originally we were just gonna center the ball retrieve in the back here, but we realized that when you're shooting the ball, it may shoot right out the end. So we wanted to make sure that we had a solid piece there. So the ball hits, lands on this ramp and goes to the ball retrieve. That's not gonna interrupt with the table leg. We've got all the components sanded and we've oiled certain areas, mainly because they're hard to reach areas and we didn't want to oil just everything because we still have to do some glue ups and you can't oil pieces and then glue them up. So we just hit those hard to reach areas. Now we're going to do that assembly and then we'll finally oil all the exterior parts that, you know, can be done after the, uh, after the glue up. And then we're going to work on some legs and then we should be able to Start playing. We decided to use some three by three ambrosia maple turning blocks that we had for the legs. And we just gave them a quick sand and then applied some Rubio Monaco charcoal to them. We decided not to glue the legs on and rather use some threaded inserts and Rampatec bolts so that we could bolt the legs on just in case we wanted to remove them for storage or transporting it later. We added some leveling feet in the bottom of each leg because there's nothing worse than playing foosball and having the ball roll inconsistently that would benefit one team or the other. All right, so we've got the oil applied and we're ready to give this a test run. We're gonna play a couple games on it and see how it goes. So we've tested it out, it's working great. Now we're gonna do another video where we have a tournament with all the employees. So let us know what we should wager on that. It should be like Jeff versus all the employees or what should we do that would be fun for you guys to watch? And what should we wager on it? That's the important part. Should it be a day off, maybe a pizza party for everybody? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe.